Hello friends, welcome to Expert Medical Coding. In today's video, we are going to learn about respiratory system, anatomy and physiology. So, let's get started. Nose. Air enters the body via the nose through two openings called nostrils or nares. Nasal cavity. Air then passes through the nasal cavity which is lined with a mucous membrane and fine hairs called as cilia to help filter out foreign bodies as well as to warm and moisten the air. Paranasal sinuses. Paranasal sinuses are hollow air filled spaces in the bones around the nose that help humidify the air you breathe and protect against infection. The paranasal sinuses produce mucus to keep the nose from drying out and trap dirt, dust and pollutants. The mucus drains into the throat where stomach acid destroys it. Pharynx. After passing through the nasal cavity, the air next reaches the pharynx that is throat. There are three divisions of the pharynx. The first is the nasopharynx. It contains the pharyngeal tonsils or adenoids which are collections of lymphatic tissue. Below the nasopharynx and closer to the mouth is the second division of the pharynx, the oropharynx. The palatine tonsils, two rounded masses of lymphatic tissue are in the oropharynx. The third division of the pharynx is the laryngopharynx, serves as a common passageway for food from the mouth and air from the nose. It divides into the larynx and the esophagus. The epiglottis is a flap of cartilage attached to the root of the tongue, prevents choking or aspiration of food. It acts as a lid over the opening of the larynx. During swallowing, when food and liquid move through the throat, the epiglottis closes over the larynx, preventing material from entering the lungs. On its way to the lungs, air passes through the larynx to the trachea, that is windpipe. In the region of the mediastinum, the trachea divides into two branches, the right and left bronchial tubes or bronchi. Each bronchus leads to a separate lung, where it divides and subdivides into smaller and finer tubes, somewhat like the branches of a tree. The small bronchial branches are the bronchioles. Each terminal bronchiole narrows into alveolar ducts, which ends in collection of air sacs called alveoli. About 300 million alveoli are estimated to be present in both lungs. Each alveolus is linked with a one cell thick layer of epithelium. This very thin wall permits an exchange of gases between the alveolus and the capillary surrounding it. Blood flowing through the capillary accepts oxygen from the alveolus while depositing carbon dioxide into the alveolus. Erythrocytes in the blood carry oxygen away from the lungs to all parts of the body and carbon dioxide back to the lungs for exhalation. Each lung is covered by a double layered membrane called the pleura. The outer layer of the pleura near the ribs is the parietal pleura and the inner layer closer to the lung is the visceral pleura. The two lungs are not quite mirror images of each other. The slightly larger right lung is divided into three lobes whereas the smaller left lung has two lobes. The uppermost part of the lung is the apex and the lower area is the base. The hilum of the lung is the midline region in which blood vessels, nerves, lymphatic tissue and bronchial tubes enter and exit. The lungs extend from the collarbone to the diaphragm in the thoracic cavity. The diaphragm is a muscular partition separating the thoracic from the abdominal cavity and aiding in the process of breathing. It contracts and descends with each inhalation and relaxes and ascends with each exhalation. Please like, share and subscribe to Expert Medical Coding. Thanks for watching.